Welcome to Listertainment, the channel with the most deceptive name in all of YouTube. And check out my merch if you are interested. A lot of people criticize boxers or MMA fighters for quitting during a fight because they see them as cowards. These people are supposed to be the toughest people in the world and they should go down via a knockout or last the entire fight. But sometimes quitting is the best thing you can do in order to be able to fight another day. The list today will talk about 5 fighters who had reached their limit and wanted to walk away from the fight, but their trainers did not want to allow them to do it. They either forced them to continue or motivated them enough to be able to stay in the fight, and most of the time it had devastating results. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. Also be sure to turn on those notifications. And finally, let me know in the comments what do you think of these coaches who don't allow their fighters to drop out of the fight. This is probably the most famous fight where a fighter was ready to give up and his trainer basically embarrassed him even more on national television by not allowing him to quit. But by calling him names and insulting him multiple times. This is the fight in 2000 between Mike Tyson and Andrew Galata. Mike Tyson was able to put down Galata with the right hand at the end of the first round. Second round continued much the same with Galata taking on a lot of punishment from Tyson. And when this round ended, he went back to his corner and told him to, to stop the fight once again. But since they refused, he took it apart. In 2018, Raquel Pennington faced Amanda Nunes for the UFC Championship. Nunes was up by four rounds in this fight when Pennington went back to her corner after the fourth round and told her trainer that she was done. The corner responded by telling her not to give up and to change her mindset, also saying throw everything we got. This motivated Pennington enough to continue on with the fight and go back in there for the final round. She absorbed an additional 19 hits for the next 2 minutes and 36 seconds before the referee stopped the fight. Had seen enough. This curling up, no intelligent defense, great stop. Nunes said that the corner should have stopped the fight and there was no need to take the additional punishment. Pennington came out in full support of her corner saying that her coaches know her best and know how tough she is and that they wouldn't put her in a situation that she couldn't handle and she has full trust in their judgment. Many fans and fighters came out saying that this was appalling for her corner not to stop the fight, but Pennington said that in the end, the ball is in her court, since she could simply take a knee and tap out. In this fight, we can see what the terrible consequences can be if a corner or trainer doesn't listen to the fighter when he says he is done. Back in 2013, Magomed Abdusulamov was fighting Mike Perez in the heavyweight division. Abdus Salamov was coming into the fight with 18 knockouts in his 18 professional fights, so when he told his corner that he was done, they didn't listen because of the so-called puncher's chance. There are various contradicting reports whether he actually asked for the fight to be stopped, but there were multiple occasions when his trainer asked questions like, are you okay? How do you feel? But Abdus Salamov never answered those questions. His nose was broken in the first round of the fight and this is what started all the trouble. Pulling the client out in has been answered. It's yes, he's much more aggressive. Left hook by Perez, and again he wobbles out the slama. I don't think that's the product of April Sanchez to uh, go to the battle of power punch like Abdus. And in the first round, Mike Perez threw punches. Perez very significant. Abdus Sulamov repeatedly complained about the damage to his face, and some members of his corner wanted to stop the fight, but somebody had the ultimate decision, and they did not pull the trigger. The result from this fight was terrible. Abdus Sulamov would finish the fight taking a huge beating, but was taken to the hospital after the fight where he was put into a coma after having a blood clot removed from his brain. Later that week, he suffered a stroke and presently his right side is completely paralyzed and has a ton of other issues that resulted from this fight. In this heavyweight fight between Martin Bacoli and Michael Hunter back in 2018, Hunter was able to stop a big time prospect in Bacoli by a TKO in the 10th round. This fight was extremely entertaining as it turned out to be a slugfest. Hunter was a cruiserweight moving up to heavyweight so he was giving up 43 pounds in this fight, but he was still able to hold his own. Keep it going, use his jab a little bit more, we'll get closer. 
to from side. He's gone. He's all over the place. But Coley unfortunately injured his shoulder after the eighth round and was ready to quit the fight since he was in a lot of pain. His trainer, Billy Nelson, refused to let him quit and put him back into the fight. Hey, hey, no, two rounds to go. Work. You must continue. Work. Put something on the table. Bacoli wants to pull out here. Let's listen to this. Martin, you need to listen. You need to listen. You just worked on the jab. Put Jabby's head off. Please, you need to work. Martin, you're no fucking good. Bacoli is basically pleading for Nelson to stop the fight, but he simply refused and Bacoli being unable to use his right hand and Hunter being urged by his trainer to throw his left hook resulted in this ending after nearing the end of the 10th round. And Hunter Billy Nelson received a ton of hate on social media after this since Bacoli was completely done after the 8th round and was completely unnecessary for him to take the beating that he took in the last 2 rounds. It just looks so bad that your fighter is asking for your help and instead of pulling him out, you throw him out to the wolves. For what? I just don't know what Billy was thinking. Back when Muhammad Ali was still known as Cassius Clay, he fought Sonny Liston for the first time in 1964. In this fight, according to his trainer, Angelo Dundee, Ali wanted to quit the fight after the fourth round. During this round, Ali was complaining that he was unable to see and that his eyes were burning. He returned to the corner and famously told his trainer to cut off the gloves and end the fight. There he is. And he's still talking and he's still clowning and I should think still predicting he said eight rounds. Dundee was a great trainer and knew that it would take years for Ali to get back to this point and have the opportunity at the title so he washed out his eyes and pushed Ali back into the ring for the fifth round. Still unable to see Ali just got on his bike and started to avoid Liston and Liston was unable or unwilling to hit him. And he's blinking and he's got something in his eyes Don't give him any mercy and Clay is still squinting then in the 6th round, Ali was all better and started to land on Liston. And after this round is where the unthinkable happened when Liston quit on his stool in between rounds. I think that him going winning now. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people say that this fight was fixed by Liston, that maybe he threw the fight since he placed a bet on himself to lose. But he could make more money from being champion, so maybe the mob got to him. It's a really weird theory with plenty of holes, since others say that Liston had something on his gloves that blinded Ali, but then this would negate the stories of him throwing the fight. No matter what happened, Ali was ready to give in, but his trainer refused to allow him to quit, and this refusal and push to continue got Ali the championship belt. It's really hard to judge the trainers in most of these cases because they have a relationship with the fighters that we just don't understand. Maybe the fighter is the type of person that likes to be pushed even when he's ready to throw in the towel. Or maybe they discussed it in the past and they agreed that the fight would never be stopped per the request of the fighter even if he asked them to do it. Either way, people will be quick to judge all these trainers for not simply stopping the fight in the hopes of protecting their fighter. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.